Welcome to... Reading Together. Hey! <laughs> Jessica and Greg. <laughs> Ever since Greg and I met, this is Greg, we have decided that we would like to read books together. We're both fairly avid readers and um, there are several books that we have either already read or know that we would like to read and they are books that we would like to read to one another. We wanted to provide some information on reading together and reading to another person and the benefits as well as the um, pitfalls. Here we go. Tips for reading out loud together. Number one, don't read out loud together lying down in bed. Yeah, because you're both tired. And you will both fall asleep. Yeah. And you will not remember <laughs> where the other person lost consciousness. <laughs> and you won't know for sure if the other person is awake or not. Because when you first fall asleep, mm -hmm. you can still have conversations with people. Your eyes will typically be closed. Mm -hmm. But you can, your body kind of pretends that you're actually awake. And, um... The other person gets upset when they find out that you've been asleep this whole time. I think one of the successful times that we actually sat down together and read this book was when we were sitting outside mm -hmm. um, on a humid night in, in, in July, August, yeah. and uh, we read several chapters. And, I, I guess and the, we discussed it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's such a huge benefit to reading a book together. Um, I mean, for us to have read the same book, you can obviously still chat about it. But to be reading it together, you're kind of... Um, it's like watching a movie together, right? You experience all these uh, plot lines and all these emotions and reactions at the same time. And um, you, you kind of can't wait to finish reading or have the other person finish reading to you so that you can discuss what's going on. I think that's probably the biggest benefit to reading together. Also, another good reason to read this book. Yes. There is a lot to discuss. Lots to talk about. 1984. This book is awesome. <laughs> As Jessica said. This was a great book for us to start reading together because Jessica had never read it and it is probably my favorite book of all time. Um, I don't reread books because there's so much good literature out there for me to read that I don't have time to reread books. But I have read this, I think, three or four times. We're currently reading The Air Affair. Yes. And by currently, I mean we've read a chapter. Look at that. And we read it in January when we were on vacation. And we had all day together. It's a good start. We had finished, to be fair, we didn't just read a chapter all day. We were finishing 1984. And once we finished that, we got so excited that we had completed this book together. It was such a rush oh, when we was. completed yeah. the book. Especially because we did the last, like, half of the book in, like, four days. Not even. I remember really powering through oh, that. Yeah. I was but, like, I, mean, I want to read a hundred pages tonight. It was the best part of the book. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. So that helped. But, and also we had time, which helped. The Air Affair <laughs> is written by Jasper Ford. It's the first book in the Thursday Next series. And it has time travel and a crazy world, and it's England set in the 80s, but it's kind of like the alternate England. And um, there are things like pet dodos, and uh, the character Thursday Next is a literary detective, so people are stealing um, manuscripts of famous texts, and um, the character Jane Eyre has been kidnapped from the same novel. So she's got to investigate that. And there's a lot of crazy, kooky characters that she meets along the way. But Greg doesn't know anything about that because he's only read the first chapter. I've read this book a couple of times. It's one of my favorites. This is probably my favorite science fiction novel of all time. This takes place in the future. And um, it focuses around Ender who is a young boy who is taken from his family and he goes into space, into the space station. There's eight books in the series. This is a series? Yeah. This would be a great <laughs> book to read together because of the pace of the book. Because it's like, um... Real human? Yeah, it's like, it's a page turn. Page turn? Yeah. Oh. Hard to set this one down. <laughs> Next on the list is Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. 
Is it 451 or 451? 451. And 451. You know, do you know what, why it's called that? No. Because that is the temperature which paper combusts. So in that case, you could say 451. You could, but nobody would know what book you're talking about. I have not read this book yet. Um, it's a book that I've always wanted to read, and um, the first introduction I had to Ray Bradbury's work, I've obviously heard of him and wanted to read a lot of his work in the past, but the first introduction I had to him was a short story that um, you and I read together, actually, mm -hmm. last summer. I think I will prefer his um, novels as opposed to his short stories. It's interesting, the second book that I've read by Bradbury is called The Martian Chronicles, mm -hmm. and it is apparently a collection of short stories. So those are some books that we are planning on reading together. It has been a wholly rewarding experience doing this. Um, literature is very important to both of us, and it gives us lots of things to talk about. So um, I would definitely recommend it. Just be patient and know that it's not going to be the same as reading it to yourself. Um, but you're going to have many wonderful conversations and another shared experience together, which is pretty unique. So, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Kind of put a damper in our reading together schedule. That actually only started about a month ago. Why would you tell them that? <laughs> They're trying to portray a very specific image. Because... You're not going to be my PR guy, that's for sure. The fact remains that our schedule. She spilled are... all the oil into the ocean.